Peace fan. Please tell me why. I just did a whole 20, 30 minute review of this film. And I wasn't even recording. I was recording on TikTok. It went live on TikTok, but damn, that just really threw me off. So I'm going to just give y'all a really quick one again. Um, I just got back like 40 minutes ago, maybe an hour ago. I'm seeing the book of Clarence. Wasn't a big fan of it. Two and a half out of five stars. Um, what I did enjoy about it was the cinematography was excellent. The cast was excellent. But I wasn't a big fan of the story. It picked up a little bit during the last 30 minutes, 40, 40 minutes maybe. It was broken down into three books. The end of the second book, it started to pick up for me. But for the most part, I wasn't really feeling it. I definitely felt like there was a lot of subliminal and subconscious programming in this film. And it's not something I would recommend. I really wouldn't, especially for your children. Um, if you have black children, don't let them see this film. Um, even if you are a Christian and a Bible thumper, I still wouldn't recommend the film due to um, just some of the subliminal programming. Um, one thing that I do want to touch on, and damn, I just did the video where I really went into detail about it. So I hope some of y'all caught the live on TikTok um, because I'm definitely not about to go through all that shit again. But what I will explain to y'all is just very quickly, we have um, Lakeith Stanfield, who's playing Clarence. And basically the plot of the movie is he gets into debt with someone who really don't play no games. And this brother is played by. Uh, second. Eric Kofi, a briefer. We know him from Lamar and BMF, you know, um, so he owe him money. And if y'all know him from BMF, you know, he don't play no games. He get, They get to playing. You can't stop the rain and it's lights out. So he's looking for Clarence, is looking for ways to pay this brother back. And one of the ways he attempts to do this is by a, a parent to be a Messiah. Because this is during the time of, of Jesus Christ in Jerusalem. They maybe, I don't know if they were specifically in Bethlehem. But um, yeah, I want to say they were in Jerusalem, and look, he, and Clarence isn't a believer in Christ. He thinks it's all a front, so he starts to do the same. He gets some friends together, and they start to act like they have certain ailments, like they're blind and sick, and he fakes like he's curing them, and then the people start giving him money, and he gets enough to pay the brother back. But in the process of him doing this, Events transpire where he becomes a righteous man in some type of way. And um, it basically like the Romans have word to kill any Messiah. So they end up capturing him and give him a little test to see if he's truly a Messiah. But by this point, he's shown himself to be a righteous man, right? So... Uh, it's implied that God is now giving him certain powers. He now has the ability to walk on water and things like that. But something I want to point out is to, like those of us who know and familiar with the book and astro theology and things like that, that we understand and understand that Jesus Christ is just allegorical for the sun and also for the Christ consciousness within that we can unlock in our brains and, and through the claustrum. Um, and for those of y'all who don't know about that stuff, that's enough to, to lead you down the path of Google and just Google Christ consciousness claustrum. And I think it'll open up enough doors from there for y'all to learn about some of this esoteric knowledge. It's some really amazing stuff. 
But um, the first scene where they show Jesus, who's played by Nicholas Pinnock, we don't see his face until midway in a movie. But in the beginning, they show him without showing his face. And what they show mostly is the sun. Right. And I thought that was very telling because those of us who know, we know that Jesus Christ is just allegory for the sun. And I'm pretty sure the brother who um, wrote and produced and directed this film, James Samuel, he's probably familiar with that, too. And that's probably why they did that, because there's another scene towards the end where Clarence is walking on water and before he gets this energy is he looks into the sky and it's almost implied like the heavens gave him that or God gave it to him but they're putting the camera directly on the sun right because you know I am the way I am the light you know it's a it's some few other passages in there that explain that but just um, keep in mind, there's no archaeological or anthropological evidence that support any of the events in the Bible, really, per se. And um, it's it's a third third hand account, you know, just like a Spider-Man comic book is none of the people who wrote that stuff even existed or were there at the time. You know, supposedly God gave him this stuff in a dream like um. Abba Garima, you know, who wrote the Garima Gospels, also known as the Ethiopian Bible, which is the oldest illustrated biblical manuscript found in the world. Uh, most of the modern Bibles is based off of this, like the King James Bible and things like that. But um, the story goes that God gave him the vision and all of this information in the Bible in a dream in one day. And God stopped the sun from setting so he can um, finish the book. So um, once you understand and understand like those logistics, you really look at these things in a different way. But let's not get too caught up on that because, like I said, I, I just really went through all that stuff in detail for y'all. And my computer didn't even record it all for some reason. So I'm definitely going to make this a quick one. But. I get a movie two and a half out of five stars. One of the stars is for the cinematography. The cinematography was excellent. The editing was really good. It had a lot of modern editing in it. It was really modern and new age. And I and me personally, I'm a fan of that type of editing. And just off the top of my head, I'm just trying to think of similar films that had a similar feel of that type of editing and I'm thinking of um everywhere all at once you know if anybody who's seen that y'all know like the editing style was a bit unorthodox it's like new age editing and that's kind of how this one was with a similar feel so that 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 was pretty good too and I thought the cast another style for the cast the cast was um excellent uh, um especially uh, excluding Tiana Taylor, I really didn't enjoy her scenes. I thought her acting was really bad. Um, I'm really not sure how she was cast with this role. Um, there was a scene where she was being stoned, and it was so bad, I literally was laughing, and it wasn't meant to be funny. But um, I, I will say that she, she has been pretty good in some other films, like A Thousand... And one, I think that's what it's called. Let me confirm. That was a really good movie. Yeah, 1001. That's a classic. I actually shared a tear on that film. But also, that film fit her really well because that role don't seem too far off from the, the person she appears to be. I don't know how she is because I don't know her personally. But like how she appears to be on camera. Is very similar to the role in a thousand one. You know, she was a New Yorker on there too, so maybe that's why. But this role is quite different, and I really didn't feel like she fit well in it. Um, I I was surprised to see Benedict Cumberbatch in the film. In the opening credits, I saw his name, and I was looking for him throughout the film. But you really don't realize it's him towards the end because he uh. Not bad, y'all. It's late. One in the morning in D.C. But, um, yeah, because I caught a late show. 
But you ain't been at that comic batch, man. Like one of his scenes was was really really threw me off. That's why I titled this. This not the only reason why, but this is one of the reasons why I titled this good movie or uh subliminal subconscious mind fuck. Cause I definitely think it was one of them. Cause like check this out. I swear I just explained all this shit. But um like he played a homeless man throughout the film, asking for change, bum and change the whole movie. Wouldn't nobody give him nothing. But Nicholas Pinnock, who was playing Jesus Christ, he gave him some money. He gave him a lot of money. So he take the money. Benedict Cumberbatch take the money, and he go get cleaned up. He go pay 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 these black hairstylists to clean him up. And once he get cleaned up, he got like real long blonde hair. And he's looking like the modern images of Jesus Christ. Um, I forget the person's name who that's molded after. It's an actual person. Scoochie or something. I can't think of it right now. But um, anyway, after he get cleaned up, the black women just start going crazy. They're like, oh, my God, it's Jesus. You know, and it just like subconsciously and subliminally that scene just was fucked up because think about these two things from a logical standpoint one we already had somebody in the film playing jesus which is played by nicholas pinnock so if this is the time of jesus and jesus exists and he's already in the town how can you see this white man and say he looks like jesus that makes no sense and even the uh, one of the women in that scene responded to that and said you don't even know how jesus looked so that was crazy. And also think about this from a logical standpoint. Those images of white Jesus are a modern construct, right? And f most Africans, if not all Africans, got the image of white Jesus through their nation being conquered. Whether that was the Berlin Conference in 1884 or some of the conquering that was happening before, right? When they conquered, they came with their religion. And with their religion came images of white Jesus. So what I'm saying is, if the film is taking place during the supposed time of Jesus, those images of white Jesus haven't even made their way through Africa yet. Or if you want to call it the Middle East. You know, they haven't made their way through there yet. So... How the fuck can these black women look at him, Benedict Cumberbatch, and lose their mind and say, that's Jesus? That just made no sense. And, and for me, I'm looking at it like I'm using I'm using this one right here, that first eye, right? That pineal gland. And I'm saying, see, this is a subliminal and subconscious mind fuck right here. That's exactly what it is. Um, So I... Like I said, that was the worst scene for me, and that threw me way the fuck off right there. Even the person I went with, she's a Christian, and I asked her what she thought of the film. And she, that was the first thing she said and pointed out was um how fucked up that scene was and how it didn't make any fucking sense. But um, I ain't going to hold y'all too long, because like I said, I just did the whole review and my computer didn't even record it or I ain't gonna blame the computer because the computer just respond off human input so the human right here didn't do the proper input so I fucked up and um I didn't record it on here but I, I did it live on TikTok so I record that kudos to y'all but before I close I want to touch on something else right the actress the love interest, the main female in the film was played by someone named Anna Diop, right? And I wonder, is she some kin to the great Che Anti Diop? Because she's from Senegal and he's from Senegal. They're both Senegalese and they both got the last name Diop. So I wonder, but I want to say this about her. She stole the show. She really did. Not only her actor. But her presence was so captivating 
in every scene. This sister was gorgeous. And not only was she beautiful, right? But she wore natural African hairstyles during the whole thing. And check this out. How many times in Hollywood do we see big budget films or films, you know, that make it to the to the big screen with the main love interest is a dark skinned woman? For one, that usually don't happen. But for two, to be a dark skinned woman wearing your natural hair. Man, that was so great to see. And I really hope she has a long, prosperous career and that she continues to rock those natural hairstyles and um, continue to have some type of integrity and uphold some of those African values, if you know what I mean. Um, Yeah, because I'm trying to use the proper wording, you know, uh, you don't want to say what you don't want. You only want to say what you do want. So um, I'm avoiding saying certain things, certain ways. But, um, yeah, great cast. Lakeith Stanfield, James McAvee, RJ Siler. Babs Elusin Malkin. I hope I'm saying that right, brother. On my side, those two were really great in it. Benedict Cumberbatch, he's probably the biggest name on the list. Um, David Oelowo, Nicholas Pinnock, I named him. Um, the great Alfre Woodard, you know, she's she's excellent. She's a legend. Like she's been in everything. So many movies. But she's really a good actress. And of course I think I told y'all earlier, Eric Kofi Abrifa was in there. Who we um mostly know from um BMF. We know him as Lamar from BMF, you know, he can't stand the rain. So um yeah, I would recommend seeing this movie. I really wouldn't. But, you know, if not, if not, if y'all trying to go to the movies, ain't nothing else really out new right now. So it, it can't hurt. It's not terrible. But I definitely wouldn't pay that $18 ticket. That $18 price tag or $15, whatever it was. Yeah, I think it was less because, um, it's not playing Adobe Digital. I usually see films in Adobe, but it's only on the regular screen. So I, I guess you could probably catch that for fifteen dollars, or maybe matinee ten dollars at the matinee. So it's 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 worth the ten dollars at the matinee. But I wouldn't pay no more for that, um, unless you're a big fan of these people. Um, and shout out again, Anna Diop, baby. Baby, you did that, girl. Did. No question. But, um, yeah, three, two and a half out of five stars. Don't recommend it. That, But the cast was excellent. Cinematography was excellent. Editing was pretty good and pretty new age. So, I'm going to upload this for y'all, and um, I guess I'll catch y'all on the next review or the next topic. And also, I was supposed to do a review before this for Night Swim, but I just had a crazy week. You know, I saw a Night Swim last week, and I had a crazy week, so... I had to skip that review. So we just going to move on to the next one after that. But I'm going to get Night Swim also. Matter of fact, I'm going to get Night Swim at 3 out of 5. I will, yes, I'm going to rank Night Swim higher than the Book of Clarence. 
I'm gonna get out a three out of five, but this this review is for the book of Clarence, so I ain't gonna go into detail about it. I'ma just say I'm gonna get out a three out of five. And if you had to pick a choice between Book of Clarence and Night Swim, I'm gonna go with Night Swim. But if you ain't if you just trying to go to the movies, let me say this before I get out of here. That's gonna sound crazy, but this some real shit. If you ain't seen a lot of the new films that's out right now, and you going to the movies, you need something to see. Wonka. Go see Wonka. That shit is better than everything that's out right now. It's like, let me see. It's out right now. Mean Girls. I haven't seen that. I don't think I'm going to see that. I ain't never seen that before. I know my daughters used to watch it back in the day. Mean Girls, The Book of Clarence, The Beekeeper. I don't even know what that is. Wonka, anyone but you, I don't know what that is, Aquaman, that was alright, I liked that better than the first one, Night Swim, I just told y'all about that, The Color Purple, no, garbage, Ferrari, that was pretty good, Poor Thing, don't know what that is, American Fiction, I've been meaning to check that trailer out because it got Jeffrey Wright and he from D.C., so, um, yeah, I might need to go see that and support that movie. So maybe that'll be my next review. Maybe American Fiction. But again, that's going to be predicated off the trailer because I don't even know what it's about. So, yeah, if y'all going to the movies, I would see Wonka first. Ferrari second. Aquaman third. That's my top three of what's out right now. And that's the particular order. Um, yeah, it's definitely not going to be Book of Clarence. It's definitely not. And it's sure in the hell ain't going to be the color purple. You know, I said, I talked about this in the first review. I was trying to figure out when I left the theater, what did the most subliminal damage? What, what was the bit more subconscious mind fuck color purple? Or the book of Clarence. Because I felt like both of them did us dirty. And now that I'm really thinking about it, I'm going to say the color purple was worse. That was more of a mind fuck. Because at least we had Anna Diop to balance it out some in this. And at least they still showed the black man as Jesus. Even though those of us who know, we know that Jesus isn't. At least from my research, not a real person, but was allegory for the sun or what they call astro theology and also allegory for the Christ consciousness within that we can unlock in our brain and um, through the claustrum. But all right, y'all. Damn, this shit done went 23 minutes already. 23 minutes and 25 gigs. That's crazy. That 4K footage ain't no joke, right? Bye, man. I'm going to catch you on the next one. Peace and love.